Hi gamers, I'm Cyber Settler and today we're playing Space Engineers. So today is the day when we are returning to the moon. So it's um, dusk already and it's a clear day. There are some uh, rain um, clouds close by, but I think it's a it's a good day to to launch. We will be in space before th those clouds get here, I think. So let's go into the ship. Well, the first thing is I have to turn on the gyros. And also I need to um, assign the impulse thrusters. So I can turn them on. And the sequence is the following, right? Well, I also need to put uh, the batteries in auto. The sequence is the following. I need to, yeah, I have the dampeners on and I should turn on the RCS. This is here. And then um, I should go to the rotor, this one here and detach the head, detached. And now I need to turn on the uh, impulse and let the rocket go. And here we go, lift off. We're going up. I think we don't need the the RCS. I'm turning them off. We have to get out of the atmosphere first and then head for the moon. So you see there how the the speed goes down, right? I'm I'm throttling all the time the the thrusters. To get ninety-nine speed, ninety-nine meters per second. We're already 5,000. We'll still have a lot of hydrogen. So that won't be a problem. Six thousand meters. I don't remember where is the atmosphere limit. I think it's uh, what is it, ten thousand or twenty thousand? I don't remember. So let's. We sh we should get going to the moon now 8000 what is the gravity uh, I don't see the gravity it's very Nine thousand now. We're almost at ten thousand. Yeah, past ten thousand now. We're still in the atmosphere though. Yeah. 
eleven thousand. But still no problem with the fuel. We have enough fuel, I think. Okay, now we're in space because of the change of the sound, right? 13,000. Yeah, we are entering space. There we go. I don't need to maintain so much the throttle. But still we are under the effect of gravity. And there's the velocity vector. It's pointing down a bit. We should go a little bit up. There we go. Okay, looks good. It looks good. Now 20,000 meters. The sun is in one side. So let's see. We can turn the the RCS Twenty five thousand now. But we're still under the effect of gravity because of the artificial horizon. I think until forty thousand or so we will be having the the gravity but the idea is to um, spare as much fuel as possible so we have to keep the the, the velocity uh, positive right maybe don't let it get below 50 or so Thirty thousand now. So, had a camera. We are 
getting out of course. So we can look at the camera. There you have it. That's the view from the back of the ship. So yeah, not still... Not still out of there. But close. Thirty five thousand. almost we're almost at 40,000 there 40,000 40,000 It's a little bit unstable this vehicle. I, I have to see when we get out of... Ah, there. We're in space now. But for some reason it's a bit unstable. I have to keep the... The nose on course. Now I turn off the RCS. Yeah, but basically we're in space now. We're in space. Let me correct course a little bit. Where are uh, there are the that's the moon base alpha. Now that now the question the big question right about what happened to the Eagle Transporter. Now we will find out. Okay, 84% of fuel, so no problem at all. No problem. And we are still far away from this. How many? How much? Sixty-four kilometers. Well, that's not much. But you know that 
well dimensions in space engineers are not realistic right it's like a mini solar system it's like um, the planets are like the, this uh, little prince <laughs> the little prince planets so if you grow a baobab in the in one of these it will destroy the planet right <laughs> a little bit bigger i think okay but there we go now we are under 60 kilometers away i really want to see what happened to the eagle transporter Hopefully it survived the landing. So I, w I wonder what happens if I turn off the... No, it won't help. Why so unstable? Let me see what happens if I let it go. It starts drifting, you see? It starts drifting from... for some reason. I think it's from the initial impulse or something. There we are going. Yeah, basically, we are not consuming fuel right now. I'm just consuming energy to keep the the vehicle. Um, well, I guess if I let it go, it doesn't matter. It will keep um, going in the same direction. It's just that it has some spin to it. And I wonder why. Well, remember that I'm using this um, thruster offset uh, mod, right? So it's important where I place the thrusters. With this ship, I follow the Apollo, um, uh, like this Apollo service module um, layout of the thrusters. It has two hydrogen tanks, the big ones, uh, one oxygen tank. So it's really minimal. It doesn't have um, oxygen, hydrogen generator. It's just the, the two tanks, well, the three tanks, two hydrogen tanks, one oxygen tank, uh, the cockpit. Um, the, um, it has 10 batteries, 10 uh, small batteries, because the big ones were making like, um, they, they are, it, it's really hard to work with a, with a big big batteries if you want like this um, um, to have uh, a distributed layout I should say then it has two gyroscopes two because I needed some symmetry it's only for that reason I couldn't place it just at the center because of the hydrogen uh, sorry the oxygen tank that is at the center yeah, and the large thruster, and uh, it has a um, conveyor frame. The conveyor frame in the back I added to um, to add some balance to the ship. Okay, where is the base now? Uh, I'm not sure where is the base now. I have to get closer. And that's the middle point, so pro yes, I, I have to go up a little bit.
Yeah, and then the other thing it has is that it has an antenna at the front and some light armor blocks. I think just one in the in the in the front. Ah, yes, and then it has, of course, it have uh, it has a landing gear. So for the landing gear, I use uh, four rotors, four um, pistons, and then there are some cylinder like column elements. I added. I added uh, one to each landing gear, and then to balance the the the. The mass distribution. I added uh, other cylinders to the to the sides. Yeah, and then yeah, a bunch of uh, conveyor blocks. But that that's it. This is uh, really a minimal configuration to um, to do the job, right? Okay, so now the sun, I think, is on our back. That's Earth. We're already quite far. Twenty kilometers to go. That's um, close. Yeah. So basically, I think we should um, head for these uh, signals here above the moon base alpha um, point. Yeah, I think we have a good, good heading in general. We're very close now. I wonder if the Eagle transporter still has uh, batteries. Well, if it's in, if it's in one piece. That's one question, and the other question if it has some uh, power left. Because if it has, probably we can see the antenna um, signal. Probably we will be um, arriving at night time. Ten kilometers now. So I cannot distinguish if uh, uh, probably yeah the the signals are not um, yeah that's one important thing probably the signals are not are not um, behind the moon because I thought that it, maybe they were behind but no. That doesn't make sense, right? Or does it? So here are four signals. Yes, the so the landing pad, yeah, basically is there. Seven kilometers. Wow, we are quite.
quite quite um close we're quite close Five kilometers. That's the above. We're very close now. I think we should go this. Now the gravity of the moon is taking over. So we are in the last phase of the of the trip. Ah, there's the base. I see the base now. There is a base. No signs of the eagle transport. So it seems that it didn't make it. It should be here. We're coming in gently now. Yeah, no sign of the yield transport whatsoever. That's a mystery now. It should be here. Okay. Let's now deploy the um, the landing gear. So the first thing, yeah, it's to um, Where are we going to land though? Uh, let me see Let me bring the other camera so we can see where are we going to land Yeah, okay. I want to land probably this way. And there, this is a good spot right here. Okay, let me yeah, extend the. Let's go down. So, it seems that the Eagle Transporter went out of course or something. I have to look for it. There. We 
We have a touchdown. Okay, I, I need to turn the plates on. Landing plates, let me turn them on. And they are locked. Okay, touchdown. Oops. Okay, I'm... What is it? Ah, of course. <laughs> All this time, I... I was, uh, since I was on Earth, um, I had my um, my helmet open. So this is what happened. So there you go. Nice landing. This is the, the landing gear now deployed, as you can see. So we made it back to the moon. Great. <laughs> so the only thing that seems that failed is the Eagle Transporter. It's not anywhere to be found now. Um, where did it go? And it's not that I have I have any signal of it. Oh, here. I think it crashed. No. No, this is not... It's a mystery, guys. I don't know where it is. Not even the... <laughs> not even the, the... How it's called? The antenna beacon signal I can spot. It should have landed here. This is the, the landing pad. These were... It should have returned. But obviously, it's somewhere... It's lost somewhere. So now, there's the mission to look for it. Middle point. He, here's the middle point. Well, one possibility is that it crashed on Earth. This is another, another possibility, that it didn't really get off Earth. Okay, but here we are, back to the moon. Okay guys, so um, I think that's everything for this episode. We um, went to Earth and came back in our um, small um, scout ship. Let's see, uh, yeah, 82% um, percent of uh, fuel we have still remaining. That's incredible. And for the batteries, I think batteries uh, still, we have 16 hours. Wow, they're they are almost full. 48 kilowatts hour from 50. That's great, isn't it? So yeah, I think um, basically it's uh, a success, except for the Eagle Transporter. <laughs> That's a very expensive uh, piece of equipment that we lost, but um, yeah, we will build a new one. Okay, guys, so um, this is everything in this episode and hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one. This is Cyber Settler signing off.